I want to turn now to the continuing Russian invasion of Ukraine. The scenes coming from major Ukrainian cities continues to shock and the bravery of the Ukrainian people is astonishing. However, the current scenes from Ukraine do not come as a surprise to those who have been watching this closely all along, which brings me to my next guest, General Sir Richard Shiriff, a highly distinguished British Army officer. Sir Richard rose to the highest ranks of the British Army over 37 years, serving in the First Gulf War, three tours of Northern Ireland during the Troubles, Kosovo and Iraq. In 2011, after returning from Iraq, he was promoted as a commander of NATO's Allied Command Operation, serving as Deputy Supreme Allied Commander Europe, one of the highest ranking positions within NATO. In 2017, after retiring from the British Army, Sir Richard published his first book, War with Russia, an urgent warning from senior military, chronicling the rise of Putin's Russia and based on his time in NATO, the book was framed as a fictional future history, but eerily predicted how war with Russia could erupt and now has, as Russia has invaded, of course, Ukraine. Many of his predictions and scenarios are sadly coming true. General Sir Richard Sheriff joins me now live from the United Kingdom. Sir Richard, we really appreciate your time here in Australia. You predicted that Russia would seek to invade a neighbouring country and try to, in part, recreate the old Soviet empire. You also said it wouldn't stop there. Given where we are tonight, what do you think are Putin's plans and goals? Well, firstly, it's good to be with you. Um, this is a nightmare come true. Putin has made it very clear that he's, he look, he's looking to see the, re, the re-establishment of a Russian empire. He's, he, here's the man who said that the most appropriate security settlement for Eastern Europe is, 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 is another Yalta. Well, to those who remember the last Yalta, February 1945 treaty between Stalin, Roosevelt and Churchill, which effectively ceded Eastern Europe to, uh, to, to Stalin, uh, that must send us a chill down the brain. And I think this is now all beginning to unfold, um, as, as we see in this uh, appalling act of, 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 uh, of violence in Ukraine. Over the past week, we've witnessed incredible bravery of the Ukrainian people holding off this invasion. Uh, but as we go to air tonight, Russian force, forces are building up outside of Kiev, armoured vehicles, tanks, artillery. With so little military support from NATO, I know that there is uh, financial support on its way to buy weapons and other things, but it's not there now. How long will Ukraine be able to hold them off? I, I, I don't know is the answer to that. But what we have to do is absolutely salute the courage and, and inspiring bravery of the Ukrainian defenders. Um, NATO, the, the NATO countries and, of course, Australia too, are providing massive support, as much as support as they can. But it's got to be indirect support because direct, direct support, uh, soldiers fighting on the ground alongside Ukrainians or, 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 or an air, air forces in the air, um, it will will generate World War Three because that means that NATO will be at war with Russia, which is precisely the scenario we want to avoid. There remains a critical danger of this thing overspilling into NATO territory, in which case, under Article Five of the Washington Treaty, which brings all member NATO, member member states in to support one attack. That would mean war with Russia, which is why NATO is building up its forces to try and deter, to make a very clear statement to Russia that there can be no further movement uh, out of Ukraine. But as far as Ukraine is concerned, how long will it survive? How long will the fight go on for? We pray as long as possible. We have to, we have to hope for the best, and we have to hope that the support mm. that the rest of the world can give Ukraine uh, will ultimately lead to uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian success, but it's a long shot. You, you've obviously uh, fought in war zones and you're now a military strategic expert. Give us a sense of how difficult it is or will be for Russia, even though it uh, outmans and outresources the Ukrainian army, to fight in these urban cities. That's not easy, is it? No, and fighting in built-up areas, fighting in cities is is in, incredibly difficult. It sucks up enormous amounts of manpower and personnel. It's very, very heavy on casualties. And I'm afraid we're beginning to see this already now with the attacks on Kharkiv yesterday uh, by artillery fire. And the worry is that as the Russians bog down, and let's be clear, 
This has not gone the Russians' way, largely because the Ukrainians, uh, two things. One is because the Ukrainians have fought like tigers. And secondly, because the Russians have shown themselves, frankly, to be pretty incompetent. Um, so as they bog down, they're not achieving their objectives as quickly as they want to. The worry is, and in fact, I'm afraid we're seeing it already, they will lash out with the indiscriminate use of artillery and other mass munitions, uh, resulting in very heavy civilian, civilian and, and other casualties. Uh, some have called Russian President Vladimir Putin a madman. They say this is all hastily coordinated. But as I said, in your book, you predicted this sort of escalation in 2017. What warning signs did you see that others didn't? Well, I wasn't alone. I just put it, wrote, put it out there in a slightly more lurid fashion than most respectable think tankers would. But um, you have to only you go go back to 2014, the invasion of Crimea. That was the strategic shock, the wake up call. Um, in I mean, the time of time of that, uh, shortly afterwards, when uh, Crimea was admitted to the Russian Federation, Putin made a speech in the Kremlin in which all the all the sort of issues we're seeing now were laid out. He talked about the policy of containment of Russia. He talked about if you press the spring, it will push back. He talked about Kiev being the mother of city, rather Russian cities. He talked about uh, the desire of all of Russians to bring all Russians under the banner of Mother Russia. Uh, it was all there. And then we've seen the continued ramp up of military capability. We've seen Putin, Putin's, um, I mean, your headline, lethal endgame that his lethal approach mm. his lethal attacks you know the sort of here 15 miles from where i'm where i'm living the 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 nerve the nerve agent attack in salisbury um here is a man for whom international rules uh, the rule of law means absolutely nothing and it's all it's it, it was i'm afraid all too predictable so this is genuinely a nightmare coming true just before we go i've got to get your view on his comments over the weekend about nuclear weapons chilling we need to be really worried by that. But equally, we've got to, we, we, we must be strong. We must not blink. Um, that is typical Putin trying to, to, book, to bully, to intimidate, uh, and to, to outface the opposition. Well, that's sobering commentary. So, Richard, thank you very much for your time. There you go. You couldn't get a better expert than that, can you?